early morning off the Dorset coast. Mike Day returns to his ship from some shore leave. I'm a second officer uh, on the Olna. She's a 33,000 ton oil tanker, uh, quite large and quite fast, with a crew of about 110. I went to see you when I was uh, 17 as a deck apprentice for three years. Passing my exams, I was promoted to third officer, and after a while, second officer. I hope eventually, they luck, get my command. But the higher he climbs towards the rank of captain, the more training and experience he will need. Handling any large ship is difficult, but Olna is a Royal Fleet Auxiliary tanker, and she often has to manoeuvre close to a navy to supply the mill stores. Uh, today, Olna is going to sea to do an exercise with two frigates. One of the frigates will be coming up on the port side to receive stores on the light jacks day. And the second frigate's coming up astern to receive fuel from the stern hose. Three ships plying along at 12 knots, linked together by pipes and cables. It's a dangerous manoeuvre requiring great seamanship. Switching around 150 feet is a very difficult job. There are all sorts of pressure waves and eddies set up, which can cause ships to come in quite uncontrolled. All the bridge teams have to keep on their toes to make sure nothing goes wrong. After two hours of working at close quarters, the exercise is over. Olna must leave open waters and steer a very precise course back to harbour. My job this morning is to take the visual bearings from the wing of the bridge, the gyro compass there. St George's Church, three, two, two. Arbor headline bearing three, five, five. Roger. And call these into the officer of the watch who will plot them and fix the ship's position. Uh, he passes the information to the navigating officer who then makes a decision if the ship is off track. He will then give the orders to the helmsman and uh, pass engine room orders via the engine room telegraph. Everybody in the bridge team has their own responsibilities. The officer of the watch, for instance, is in sole command of the ship for the period of his watch. Ultimately, though, at all times, the captain can take command of the bridge because he is in command of the ship. The bridge team is closed up on a navigational problem. <laughs> all deck officers want to command their own ship. The problem is, uh, as they go up through the ranks, getting the experience, which will help them to make the decisions required when in command of the ship. These decisions have to be taken early. Take, for instance, there's the QE2 coming up. She's just over a mile away in poor visibility. That will be a close quarter situation. The ships are so slow in manoeuvring that you have to get it right very early on. All ships are difficult to manoeuvre, especially when it comes to stopping from full speed. Super tankers are particularly difficult and there have been many incidents involving ships like the Amoco Cadiz, which lost her steering in a gale. She ran aground and sank, leaving her cargo of oil on the beaches of Brittany. Many an officer must have wondered what he would have done in that captain's place. Olna is approaching harbour now, aiming for a narrow gap in the breakwater. The captain has taken command of the bridge, not wanting to entrust this final manoeuvre to anyone else. It's quite a problem for young officers to get experience in actually controlling the ship entering harbour. Nobody's going to thank you for putting the ship aground or having a collision. There's a tide across the mouth of the gap, so we have to make sure that the ship has got enough speed on in order to steer her successfully. But at the same time, once we're through that gap, we have to stop the ship quickly. Training people and giving them the experience before they get command is very, very difficult. Young officers spend a lot of time looking at their senior officers, trying to get experience that way. But nothing can really substitute 
for actually being in a situation where you have to make the decisions yourself. So there's the problem. How to give mariners the experience of ship handling, which they need in order to get promotion, without putting lives and vessels at risk. Here's one solution. These two ship's pilots are going to take a super tanker through a canal for the first time in their lives. But they aren't too worried. Their ship is just a wooden model. It's carefully scaled down to give the sensation of handling a real ship at sea. And the crew can make mistakes with only the paintwork at risk. But sitting hunched up in a small model just isn't the same as working on a proper ship's bridge full of instruments and equipment. Now, suppose you made a different sort of model, a full-scale one this time, a full-scale replica of a ship's bridge with all the controls and instruments. And instead of making the ship move around a lake, you made the lake, or rather the sea, move around the ship. Well, that's what happens inside this building. It's called CASIM, which stands for Cardiff Ship Simulator. And it's certainly not a ship, from the outside at any rate. It's firmly rooted to the spot here in the center of Cardiff. But inside, well, let's go and see. Start. Start 15. Starboard 15. Starboard 15 on, sir. One short blast. Midships the wheel. Midships. Wheels the midships, sir. Hello again, Mike. Hello, Mary. Can I interrupt the exercise for a moment? Yes, I think it'll be all right. Uh, could we stop the exercise, please? Right. Uh, control, freeze the exercise, please. Right. Well, this is the bridge. It looks a bit smaller than the bridge of Olna, but is it realistic? Yes, it's very realistic for a merchant ship bridge. First, we have the uh, engine room telegraph to control the main engines. Over here, we have the radar for navigation and anti-collision. Uh, we have here a compass for taking bearings and positioning the ship. Over here, we have the quartermaster. And over there, we have the chart table with all the charts on. I see you've got windows. My only problem is that I can't see the sea through them. Well, no, that's all gone, I'm afraid, because we've frozen the exercise for you. If you'd like to go and sit over there, we'll start the exercise again and uh, show you all we've got. All right. All right. Control, go back into run, please. Going into run. Mike is now in command of a ship like the Olna coming into the port of Milford Haven on the Welsh coast. Right, I'd like to uh, take some way off the ship to give the in his phalanx and more seaway. His first problem is to avoid the in his phalanx, an outward bound ferry. Okay, we'll come starboard 10. Starboard 10. Steady on uh, 030. 030. Right, she's now at half a mile coming down our port side. I think we can uh, start going. The seascape that they're looking at on the bridge is thrown onto a screen by these projectors. The pictures aren't film or video recordings of a real scene, they're generated by a computer. Even a home microcomputer can draw pictures. Pixels can be coloured in anywhere on the screen to give an outline. And then a solid shape. By changing the positions of the pixels, it's possible to give the appearance of movement. The same principle is in use here. A much more powerful computer has been programmed so that it can generate millions of different images. The projectors turn the computer's commands into pictures, and given time and money, the computer could be programmed to show any scene. Port 15. Port 15. This is the database for Southampton Water. And this is the database for a port in Sarawak. And the one that's in the computer at the moment is Milford Haven. An enormous amount of time goes into the preparation of these databases. 
Here's how they put a ship into a database. The first stage is to get a good reference, a photograph or drawing, and make a sketch of it as a series of blocks. This has to be done for everything in the database. Cliffs, harbour walls, lighthouses, buoys and so on. When the drawing is finished, the shape is digitised and colours are chosen for each part of the ship. The computer does the rest. And when the database is used with the Cardiff simulator, the scene starts to look very real. At the controls is an instructor who can move either the ship alone or the whole scene as though from a changing point of view. He can turn the surface of the sea from flat calm to rough and bring down a nasty sea fog. Well, that will seem all very well, but for it to be of any use, the officers on the bridge must feel that they're navigating a real ship. So the visual scene's got to change in a very precise way. I'm gonna slow down, I think, to keep clear of that. I'll come down to dead slow ahead. Let me know if she loses steerage, please. All the changes in course and speed are relayed to the control room, where the instructor can see exactly what's going on. The computer works out where the ship is. Every 15 seconds, it plots the position on a chart with a tiny red dot. All the time, the computer is changing the pictures to match and altering the bridge instruments. Mariners rely as much on these as on the seascape. Engine noises and floor vibrations complete the reality. Uh, the other ship outward bound is the London Reefer. London Reefer. Oh, Onna is past the ferry and well on her way into Milford Haven when an emergency call comes through from another ship. Olna, Olna, Picton Castle calling Olna. Are you receiving, please? Loud and clear. Oh, no. oh, no, this is Picton Castle. Yes, sir, we are dragging anchor. We are dragging anchor. We will have to pick up and come out if that is acceptable to you. We'll well At sea, any unexpected movement of another ship can cause problems. Picton Castle is a cargo vessel which has to leave its anchorage in a hurry. In reality, its speed and heading are under the control of the instructor, who can make the situation as difficult as he likes. Olna will have to squeeze past the other ship at a narrow point in the channel. Yes, sir. It confirmed that it... I'm afraid I'm going to pass very fine to starboard uh, to that, of that boy because of the, the ship to port. However, oh, I can adjust the uh, speed to help. Well, clear back. So I come to dead slow ahead. You keep on let me know if you have problems with steering. No. Yes, we're going to have to pass fairly close at this point because she's uh, approaching... Staying at 025, sir. Okay. Approaching at an unfortunate position. So the illusion of being on the bridge of a ship is complete. But what sort of ship? After all, every vessel from a super tanker to a fast frigate handles differently. How does the computer cope? This cassette holds the program that tells the computer how a super tanker would behave under all sorts of different conditions. And this does the same for a container ship. But where does all that information come from? Well, this is a model of a short sea... From here, the National Maritime Institute Limited, where they run tests using wooden models. Twin screws and twin rudders at this end. It's a very beautiful model, uh, but what I noticed first of all is that it's a hull and no superstructure. Yes, well, at NMI, as far as uh, manoeuvring is concerned, we're interested really in the underwater uh, form of the ship, which is very precisely modelled and uh, very small differences in the uh, shape of the hull can make quite big differences in the performance of the uh, model, particularly in its manoeuvring performance. Uh, for example, a, a ship such as this uh, doing a simple turn uh, moves in this sort of direction, but that motion uh, consists of uh, a four 
an aft motion, a sideways motion, and a turning motion like this. And we're interested in the forces that act on the hull. And these measurements are made in a towing tank where we move the model up uh, in a straight line but at different angles to its direction of motion and measure the forces that are induced on it by its passage through the water. And secondly, we may put the model on the end of a rotating arm where instead of moving it in a straight line, we're now moving it in a circular motion. From the towing tank tests, we get a, a great deal of data. Uh, for example, this shows how the side force varies with uh, different angles of its motion. Um, from this, then, we've got to sit down and uh, work out equations uh, which describe this motion. We then have to write a program which will simulate the motion of the vessel. What I'm doing here is uh, entering the speed of the ferry that we were looking at, a rudder angle, uh, of say 35 degrees and a certain engine setting and uh, we will then compute the uh, turning circle that that uh, program produces. Well what's the point of doing the computer simulation? We need to do it first of all because we have to check that our equations and our program is actually uh, representing really what the ship actually does and we can take a model such as the ferry here and run it in a large outdoor tank We can then track the model and check this against what we've actually computed. And if the two don't agree, then we must obviously go back to our uh, equations and see whether they are actually correct or not. And when we're finally satisfied that we have got a correct set of equations, they can then be sent off to CASIM, for example, to uh, uh, drive the ship simulators that they have down there. Steer 083. That's for the final approach to the berth. Mike has successfully navigated his way past various outward bound ships and he's nearing the jetty. Quarter of a mile down from here. Okay. Oh, I think we're going too fast. I'm going to take some way off him. Soon the tugs will be alongside and then Mike will be able to relax. Right, the engine's going astern. Let me know if we'll do a stern steering right. Well, how does it feel to have used a computer simulation for the first time? Well, given a couple of minutes sort of acclimatising to the various instruments and things, the actual, the visual feeling of, uh, of being on the ship and doing it and, and uh, totally taken out of the place, yes, it was, it was very realistic, I was very surprised. You really believed you were on board That's ship? That's right, and I was beginning to worry like I would be as if I was actually, you know, had the 20,000 tons of ship or whatever there, yes. <laughs>